Hello guys and a big welcome back to the channel. We're back today with another video where we're going to be working on this XR75 frame. We're going to be bringing a modern touch to this custom bike and attempting to design and manufacture a bracket using the 3D printing process. So let's have a close look around this bike and see what we're working with. This frame has come from a very good friend of mine and he is building a very cool XR75 custom with all the trick parts and one of them is an uprated CDI and with this new CDI comes nowhere to put it so he kindly asked me to kind of jump in and see if I could think of something to hold this bracket or sorry to hold the CDI so I thought you know what let's make a cool video let's make an even cooler bracket and see what we can do. As you've just seen, we've started by getting all the parts on that we need as datum points. So there's two side panels that hold a bracket in the center. And this bracket in the middle is gonna be one of my key fixing points. So I'm spending a bit of time to get the bike built up and ready so that when I take my measurements, I know that everything is in the place it will sit when the bike is fully built. And here is that bracket I was talking about. It sits between these two side panels as a support. I think on the original bike it was used as an air filter bracket, but as soon as I saw this, I thought that's a perfect spot to fix the CDI bracket to. So grabbed a few bolts and got this thing all bolted together nice and solid. And another great reason to assemble this as much as you can before you design is to understand how the thing will go together. How is it going to be built? Do I need to factor anything in? Am I going to be able to get access to all these bolts? And sort of what surrounding parts do I have? So whilst I'm doing this, as much as it helps me with measurements, it also gives me a good idea about how I'm going to actually fit this new bracket into the bike. So this is the coil that we will be building this bracket around. Quite a compact unit, but you can see here I'm offering up where I think in my head it could sit. I want it to tuck down quite low out of the way and still give you easy access to get your hands in there to clip the harness to it. But yeah, once again, you can see we're just kind of offering it up, giving you guys an idea of what we're gonna aim for and then picturing in our head how this bracket will sit around it and fix together. Um, I'm quite keen to use these two fixing points here along with that bracket on the bottom. So it gives me a nice four solid fixing points. With the bike fully together now and the parts on the side, I get out my measuring equipment. So I've got a set of digital calipers, which I use just to take general hole centers, hole diameters, and I start taking notes to build a picture in my head of what I'm going for. And I'm, start, I'm sort of working from these holes forward. So I'm trying to take measurements from hole centers to bracket edges, as you can see here, and just getting as many dimensions as, as I can on paper. So I have a really good starting point. And what we're doing here is actually quite difficult. Whereas in a company, a big business, you may have a 3D scanner or have full 3D models of frames and vehicles. This one here, we are trying to take all these key measurements to build that picture in our head. So essentially we know all our fixed points and we can build our part around them. So although simple, it is actually quite difficult. And after putting all those dimensions down, I kind of mock up in my head what I'm thinking for this bracket. So you can see there a little holder, fixing points, top and bottom, and something that the CDI will slide straight into. So I get my key CDI dimensions and we're gonna head off to the computer and start designing. So guys, you join me upstairs at the computer where we're gonna take a closer look at this part and what we intend to make. So obviously we've taken some base measurements. We've got an idea of the sort of design we want. We've mocked it up on the bike. And now we're gonna head over into CAD and create a file that we can 3D print. So let's jump onto the computer screen and take a look at this design, what we're aiming for, the sort of parameters we're working with and go from there. And for anyone who's not familiar with my channel, we've been printing with a Prusat Mini. I started this printer and I'm still using it. So it's a really good machine. Um, everything we are printing today is going to be on that. And I've got a range of videos covering materials, setup and all those things. So if you're here directly for the 3D printing, check out those other videos. You'll also enjoy them. 
So we've hopped straight into SolidWorks where I have built this part and you'll see straight away I have done this in two parts, um, mainly for printing reasons but we'll go into more detail of that in a bit. But having a look at the part you can see those two top holes we've started up there and we've put ourselves a flat plane with two holes in it. Straight away I've gone for countersunk because I want a really sleek finish, I want to have all bolts sitting flush with the surface of the bracket but this is pretty simple um, I've got a big hole in the middle purely to allow things to pass through it and just to take some material out of the part if we don't need it to be super strong in the area why well, have the extra material and then down the bottom you'll see we have got two fixing holes and those two fixing holes are for this reason and that is the bottom part of the bracket. So the CDI is actually gonna slide into this part and you'll see we've got two through holes on the front face and then two holes on the bottom face. So those bottom holes will obviously line up to that bracket and then these holes in the center will allow the bracket to fix together. So it can be printed in two separate parts and then be brought together as one piece. And being a 3D printed part, we can add radiuses, uh, fillets all over the part and the 3D printer will eat that up. Same with those countersunk holes, we can print them straight on which is ideal. So now we've got a part, let's get this sliced for the printer. As you can see behind me, we've got the sliced file on the screen. Um, as kind of described, we've done this in two parts. Um, mainly to make it easier to print. Like I've, like I've said, I wanted to avoid supports or anything like that, so I've designed it in a way where it can be printed without supports. We're obviously working from this plane upwards and there's no overhangs or anything like that. So hoping that well works well. It's also a nice way to have two parts bottom together and means that we can be a bit more, I don't know, adventurous with the design. So now that's sliced, we're gonna do exactly the same thing with the other one. We'll put the face down, the big face down for the other part and then we'll get them up onto the printer and start printing them. Um, in case I haven't mentioned, we're printing in a PLA, a gentleman's grey PLA. The final parts will be in a flat black PLA, but that's all I have at the moment. So for getting the part built, testing, and getting it back to the person, it's perfect. And then down the line, we will revisit and just hit print again on some black PLA. Um, print time for this file is three and a half hours. So not too bad. I said day's printing re realistically by the time you've done set up and cleaning. So let's get straight into the printing. As always, I start with getting my compressed air can out and giving the machine a quick dust down just to get any of that loose stuff off. And then we fire it up and hit print on this part. Um, as always, the machine goes through its calibration cycle and checks the bed height and the level of that. And we start laying down some filament. So as always, it starts with the outline and starts printing this part. Um, always cool to see, and you can just get an idea of the size and you instantly get a feeling for what your part is gonna be like. But sped up video here of the first few layers and is looking good so far. So let's see how we get on. We are now 20% into the print. So let's take a look at the current level. So obviously the first layer went down well and now we're working on this lower section. So we've got the countersunk holes in the bottom and it is working its way around this CDI holder. So how long left? Two hours and 39 minutes. So let's update in an hour and see where we're at. Right, let's check where we are at now. 79%, 42 minutes remaining and this is the current state of the part. Um, looking really, really good so far. We've got nice quality, the holes have come out nice. I was a little worried about them, but you know what? They are spot on. Let me flip the light quickly. There we go. They have come out absolutely wicked. Um, second hole to go, and the countersink hole on the back, as you can see. And then that part's done. That is part one now complete. Um, successful print, it is looking good. Uh, first thoughts are that there's not a string in, but you can see the layer sort of separation quite clearly there. 
Um, this filament has been sitting out on the desk for a long time, so maybe that's part of the reason. But like I say, we'll be changing over to some new black stuff, so that's fine. But let's pop this off and see if the CDI slots into that gap. One of my favourite parts, popping the print off of the flexi bed and literally a little tweak and it comes straight off, which is perfect. And now the moment of truth, will it fit together? Is the design right? And as you see, it goes straight in there, which is a very good start. That is what I would call uh, success. So as you saw there, the CDI we have in this small aluminium box, and this is the part we've designed, or should I say the first part of it. Obviously we've got the rest of the bracket, but as an initial test, like I say, I left half a mil clearance on this casing just for I thought, oh, a bit of tolerance, but that slides in there, locks into the bottom like that, and then that will sit like that. I'm thinking for actually holding it, obviously it's quite well secured in that way, and you have a harness here, but maybe a slight bit of tape just to make an interference fit, or when I go to the final production part, I will take this down a tiny bit just so it's more of a slide press fit rather than a loose fit, but very happy with the first part. Let's get the next bit printed. So, as with this second part, you can imagine it's a very similar process to the first one. So we get the file loaded up and onto the printer, hit the play button and it works and does its thing. The first few layers go down really well and then I just check in every now and then to make sure it's working. So you can see here, 50% I come back and we've got the base part together. Um, the thickness of this is 5mm so we've nearly reached that and it is working on that sort of top layer. And before you know it, you're here with a final part. So pop that off as before and then we're going to get straight out to the bike and get this thing on. We're back out outside and these are the final parts to this assembly. So we've got part one here, the CDI holder which is looking great in the daylight and part two which is the sort of back supporting bracket. But we're now gonna bolt these up so we've got some nice countersunk fixings, um, six mil bolts and you can see once in place they sit flush or below flush with the surface. But you can see here these two parts line up when they're the right way around and they all drop together like this. Those two front holes act as access ports you could call them and then you can bolt this thing together. It's important to note that bolts will all be long for now and cut down once finally installed. With this bracket assembled it's now time to get the bike ready to test if this bracket fits. Obviously before we had some grommets and side panels so we're going to get one side bolted up as you can see here so we've got the bottom fixing mounts and then we're going to move over and see if it fits. Um, first drop in it's looking pretty good the two top bolts go in nicely and locate really well and then we drop nuts on the bottom of them uh, with those two nuts tightened up we can move down to the lower section and fit these and do you know what I am really happy of this uh, it fitted together really really well it's a, a nice tight fit we had the right clearance on the holes so everything passed through well and it looks really really good so as the part stands it's looking like a success but we need to check if this CDI still fits in place and you can see here as before it still drops in which is a big win but this is a good over overview of the part you can see that's the in and out so when assembling you'll slide that in as mentioned we'll tighten up that fit between the CDI and the bracket but it gives a good idea for now. And that, I would say, is the end of this project. Now, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. It was great fun to film and make. It's a nice mix between the 3D printing and the classic bikes. But we'll be back soon with more bike content, so I will see you in the next one. Make sure you take it easy, and I'll see you then.